You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Love Talk Live. I'm your host, Jamie Bronstein, and today I have with me TK Trinidad. Welcome. Hi, hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Can't complain. I mean, you know, just living the life. Yeah, um, I'm sure you've been um, really busy going out to lots of restaurants and stuff recently. <laughs> yeah, I, we, I think that's the only thing. Everything else, I don't really, this sounds terrible. I don't really not miss like seeing my friends, but going in the restaurants, when they, especially when they brought it back, the outdoor restaurants, like that was like my thing. I, I was going to restaurants like once a week and I enjoyed the outdoors because you're still spacing it out. But when they took that away, I was just like, oh, that's one thing I truly miss, which sounds terrible, but you know. No, it's okay. I'm the same way. I love, like, it makes me feel alive when I go to a restaurant. Right. Yeah. It's like part of life. Yeah. It's just like an experience. And it's a little bit different than, like, you know, Toronto. I'm from Toronto originally, and that, I didn't grow up doing that. So going to, like, a restaurant in LA and, like, it's, it's just, it's, it's just, I don't know, it feels adult like. So it does. And I know part of your bio, which I'm going to read in a second, has to do with you love going on dates. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I love going on dates, but it's a new the end. So I, I, I've been going on a quite a, well, I was going on quite a few dates up until the end of last year. This year, I actually haven't been on any. So, you know, but I'm playing it by ear. The year is young. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So TK, welcome. I'm going to read you guys, um, read you guys a little bit about TK. So TK is ambitious, engaging, and determined, best described. The former University of Oregon sprinter and Toronto native has been in the broadcasting industry for over 15 years, starting her reporting career back in Toronto with outlets such as CTV, Global, Sun TV, CBC Radio, Byte TV, and Rogers TV. TK knew she wanted more, making her way to sunny Los Angeles. Quickly finding her footing in the big city, TK found herself in the fast-paced world of entertainment, becoming a contributor for some of the biggest networks in Hollywood, such as TMZ, VH1, and iHeartRadio. It doesn't stop there for the host and entrepreneur, as you can also find her running a Black-owned cocoa butter business called Center in Company and co-hosting her own women's wrestling show. Although TK stays busy, she doesn't mind taking a break for a hard workout or a nice dinner date. <laughs> so there is... So much to talk about. Let's just start oh with you because this is Love Talk Live. Right. I love talking about relationships. It's my thing. <laughs> so um, tell us. I love um, one of my favorite questions. We can just start here is what have you learned about dating in general? Like, What's one of the best things you've learned about relationships, dating, yourself through dating? Um, any advice you have for people? Um. I guess stick to like what you what you want, and um, I think I saw this on um, the Millionaire Matchmaker. Like, have your like five your five non negotiables, and then like everything else is you know up for debate. So I remember when I first first started dating, like with the online dating stuff. Like my whole thing is like I loved tall guys, and. I ended up going out with this one guy and I saw he was like shorter. I think he might've been like five ten, and I get actually two guys, two separate guys. And I gave them both chances and we're still friends up until today. So it didn't work out relationship wise, but you know, I think before I would have been like, okay, well you don't fit the height requirements. So I'm not even going to bother. And now it's just kind of like, you just never know. So the height is kind of negotiable. Um, so that was one thing. And then, um, also like really deter like like whatever you want you kind of stick to that so and there's certain trigger words to to me that i'm like i'm not even gonna bother with so if the guy's like oh let's go with the flow then i'm not i don't i don't even go past that conversation so there's certain things like those kind of really help me trim the fat and especially with online dating there's certain things that i look for that like I almost trade it like baseball. So if you don't do certain things to get to that next level, I'm not even like we're not even gonna go past the conversation stage. So um, I found that's really helpful for somebody who like I'm like busy and I like to keep a schedule. And I hate another lesson I learned. Sorry is like I don't like miss mess my workouts out for other for other people. So if you can't fit into that schedule or I can't make it work 
and you're that interesting to me, then I just won't even do it. And I found that's really kind of saved me a lot of time and a lot of like, oh my gosh, why did I go on this date? Or how did I end up here? That type of thing. So. So good. It sounds like you've already like been my client and like, cause this is what I help my clients with. I mean, you are, you've set the bar. Yeah. And not in like a, that you're not open way. Cause it sounds like you have your non-negotiable, like you know what to do with the non-negotiables yeah. and everything past that. You're just open, which is so great. Yeah. And I love that you, that you're valuing, valuing your time mm -hmm. and that like, for instance, I have a lot of clients and they, they're like, oh my God, I spent like two and a half hours on the date and oh. I didn't want to be there. I'm like, dating and relationships, it's a, it's an investment of your time. Yep. And so if you're not happy, you get out of there. And it yeah. sounds like you would have that attitude. Oh, well, I don't, I even try not to get to that step. I think the first, like, I'm, I'm very, if we can have a conversation and we can have a really great conversation and you can laugh at like my really dry sense of humor, then we can get on to that next level. But I find like a lot of people, a lot of guys, you know, we never even get to the phone conversation. So that's like so much easier for me. That's like, okay, well, if we can't even get to a phone conversation, then like, I'm, I'm not the type of person where, cause guys often do that. It's like, oh, let's meet here. And I'm like, no, we need to talk on the phone first because that's the last thing I want because I am that nice person where I'll be, okay, well, we'll just, Go through that. I think that's the Canadian in me. So I rather try to bypass that, and hopefully, it, like that doesn't happen. So I rather have the conversation first. Then we can determine if you know we're interesting enough to each other. I've had phone conversations where it's like, I think we both determined like, oh, this is not going to work, and then we just none of us called each other back, and that was perfectly fine. So it saved a lot of time. Well, it also seems like what you're doing is such a great. It's like you're an advocate for vetting first. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And getting to know a little bit um, before you actually meet in person, which everybody in COVID has had to do anyway, but it right. sounds like you're like ahead of the game with that message. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, makeup, outfits, driving, cause nobody's gonna like, I'm not gonna let a guy pick me up from my house. So it's just like, there's so many of uh, those little things and I don't wanna like waste an outfit. And you know, there's I'm, I could just find so many other things to do especially if the date goes wrong. So I rather just not, be in that position. So I try to skip it all together. So. so years ago, when I was single, I, whether this is right or wrong, it, it worked for me. But I would, I wouldn't necessarily do as much vetting as you did with mm -hmm. the conversation, just because I don't love talking on the phone. So I if I wasn't sure about the guy, sometimes I would schedule maybe like two dates in one night, you know, like uh, yeah, I've done that makeup and the hair and the, and the time. Maybe yeah. Three. I think I did three like once. <laughs> Anyhow, um, just because it is like you put the makeup on, you get all ready. And at least like, I would think like one out of the three would be right. okay time. And that's why I have actually certain restaurants that I go to, like the waiters know me. So there's like three or four restaurants I go to that's near my house and I'll have them meet me there and the waiters know me. And at least if it doesn't like, you know, quite work, then at least I know I'm guaranteed to get a good meal. It's usually two meals because they serve so much food. So yeah, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's the vetting part's like my biggest. And plus I love, I actually love having conversations. Like talking on the phone is great. But like having a really like great conversation where you can talk about everything and you can laugh. And it just seems like you need that connection first in order for that to happen. And if you could do it on the phone, then at least, you know, when you're sitting across that person, if it doesn't work out into a relationship, at least you have a great conversation. Yeah. And it's so interesting because that in-person chemistry is an energy is really what it's all about. Yeah, so yeah. I love, I love what you're selling. I love like what you're saying, because at least, you know, like it's, you already know that you guys are going to enjoy each other's company, right? You have that down. You're not going to get there and be like, this sucks. I need to leave. Right. But then it's like the cherry on top. You get there and you guys actually have this chemistry also. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to be a relationship expert or coach. <laughs> forget yeah. the coaching, forget the, the cocoa, like the... <laughs> You know my friends that my friends though I've actually the last the last the last relationship I had was a train wreck and so my friends are holding me holding that like anytime I go on a date it's like well we have to vet him I'm like guys I've lived enough where like it was one mistake so they won't agree with you but I I think you know my I think once I get into a relationship and I get married then I can actually legitimately like sell that like 
trust me, like I know what I'm talking about. So I'm waiting for for that for that person, I guess, to make it all make it all work. And it will happen, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think that really it comes down to intuition. Well, first of all, you're human. You mm-hmm. know, like, people make decisions in the moment, and w- but when we can cultivate that connection with ourselves and our intuition then the world is our oyster. Like no more mistakes ever happen in terms of like when we're just honoring ourselves. then mm-hmm. things happen the way that they're supposed to. Yeah. It's like when you're really centered within, that's when you really attract the right people. And then if you're not, then you attract the wrong people, which is what happened to me last year. So it's just like, oh yeah, this all like, like it all made sense. So, you know, I am, and I, and I find too, when, when I'm centered, then I'm not attracting as many people because then a lot of guys see that I'm not like, you can't play like that game of, Oh, come over and I'm going to cook you dinner for our first day. Like that's not going to happen. So a lot of those, like those stuff that might happen on other people, like it's not going to happen on me. I think they kind of sense that. So it Mm -hmm. it works more time for me to actually do some work and make some money. I was just having a conversation with a client today about not wavering and just being so strong in who you are that nothing on the outside is going to affect that. And it sounds like you have that really down. Yeah. I mean, last year, I think I, I personally think that if last year you didn't come out of it or, you know, we're still in it, but if you didn't come out of it, like, you know, with something other, whether it being close to the family or learning something or learning something about yourself or something along those lines, then it's just kind of like, well, yeah, I understand we're all trapped at home, but we should do at least something. So I think last year for me really um, put a lot of things in perspective um, with so much stuff that went on. And it really kind of, it brought me down to a point where I looked around, I'm like, okay, I don't like any of this. And I was able to really change it and do things that worked for me in the past and really kind of put that all together. So, you know, now I, I feel without last year happening, then I would still be kind of spinning that same wheel. So yeah, it's, you know, it's, I'm in a good place right now. Good. I feel like you are. And I haven't spoken to you before. This is the first time, but I feel like you're. In, it's like I have nothing to really compare it to, but I'm sensing that you're in a really good place. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Can't complain. You seem really solid. Um, okay. So you can, this is your choice. Would you like to talk about your entrepreneurship with your with your products, mm-hmm. or would you like to talk about TMZ hosting, or do you want me to choose? Because I, I feel like I have questions that I want to roll into right now. <laughs> um, we can, I mean, you're, you know your audience, so whatever whatever, whatever you feel you fit. Okay, well, I mean, the audience is going to love everything you have to say, but I'm just, I'm so curious about, I love, it sounds like what you do with the hosting and stuff and interviewing is very much like what I do. And so I would love to hear like, why, what is it about interviewing that you love? Like, why do you love interviewing people? Can you tell us a great story, like your favorite interviewing story? Ooh, um, well, the reason I love interviews because I've always asked questions and I'm always curious about people. Like, I always feel like people have a story, no matter whether they're a celebrity or not, everybody has a story. And once I... I kind of go from hot to cold or cold to hot, meaning that like, if I meet you, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm believe it or not, I'm really an introvert, but I find one like thing that's like, oh my God, this person's really interesting. Then be prepared for like 150 questions. So um, I've always been that person that's like, I'm always interested in what makes people tick. And prior to TMZ and interviewing, I was actually a personal trainer. So I actually listened to a lot of people's problems and stuff like that. So that was really helpful to kind of take it into the interviewing because I learned a lot of stuff about a lot of different people that, I mean, it was, it was, it was wild. Um, so my gosh, I don't know. I had some really great interviews. Um, hmm. It's okay. It can, it can help you. Um, I think, okay, so one, I don't know if that's my top interview, but one interview was really good. It was uh, Luke Cage, Mike Coulter, and I interviewed him. He was doing a, a movie. I actually interviewed him, the Allstate guy, Dennis Haysburg, and um, she's Chrissy. Her real name is Chrissy, but she plays um, the sister on This Is Us. I had them okay, all in one day. Matt's? Yeah. Yeah. I had them all in one day and um, they were all amazing interviews, but you had two minutes to like interview them. 
So by the time I, I had interviewed maybe four people before I got to them, so I kind of learned the rhythm. So by the time I got to them, I learned that I literally have about 15 seconds to like while I'm walking and preparing. So I use that 15 seconds to kind of connect with the person. So I had read like, I think she, Christy's like a singer or something with her mom. Mm -hmm. So I read that. So as I was walking to get like to get into my seat, I talked about her singing career and her mom. And so now we connected. So then when, when the interview started rolling, it like all kind of rolled into one. So it was really great. And then with, um, I was calling Luke Cage, but with Mike, same thing with him, him and Dennis Haysburg were at the same time. They were both in the same interview. So I had 15 seconds to let them know like, Hey, I love Luke Cage. It reminds me of New York. I love my, like, I love New York and New York's like my second home. And then Dennis Haysburg was in one of my favorite movies, which is love and basketball. So I told him that. So that's all within 15 seconds. And um, Mike Coulter actually ended up following him on social media. And he actually bought a lot of my products and put us, put our company in the top 10, his top 10 list in New York magazine. So like it kind of all like a lot of the stuff kind of like all kind of works in together. So I would say, I, don't, I wouldn't say he's like, he's one of my favorite interviews, but he's one of my favorite interviews because like we're kind of still connected off of that like one moment. So it was, that was really cool. Well, it sounds like you've mastered the art of connection. Oh yeah. And you did it, you do it fast. You work fast. Like, oh yeah. And you do it genuinely. Like that's the thing. Like I can tell that you're a very genuine, authentic person versus maybe car sales e interviewing where you actually listen and you're actually interested because that it makes such a difference. Right. Yeah. I mean, we all we're all like we're all human, like you mentioned before. And, you know, even though our experiences are not all the same, there's there's still like when you think of those great movies or those great songs, like they're still based off of, you know, stories in the Bible, whether you believe in the Bible or not, there's still mm -hmm. elements there. Like if you look at Star Wars and, you know, all those other movies and a lot of songs are about love or breaking up or something. So it's all the human element. So if you can kind of tap into that or tap into a specific place or something like that, then, you know, there's a connection there. Yeah. I mean, it's all, I feel like people don't like connection is underrated. Yeah. People don't realize the important, and it's like we were talking about intuition before. I think connection with yourself that you need to have in order to connect yep. with other people. And so congratulations on your, the art of connection. You're very good at it. Thank you. I try. <laughs> uh, is this like also, you said you're from Toronto originally? Mm -hmm. I've been to Canada. I've never been to Toronto. Is Toronto known for being like friendly and genuine? Or do you feel like it's like from where you're from? Or where do you feel like you get that from? Um, gosh. Um, I, get, I mean, I grew up in a household where like manners is very important. Like my grandmother passed away, I think about seven months ago. And her like phrase throughout my like whole growing up was manners make the man. And I never got, like, I never, I remember the phrase, but I never, it never really like clicked until she passed away. I'm like, oh, but because like, you know, my parents instilled into me, it's like part of like my, like, my family culture that I'm very like big on that. Even when I was on TMZ, there's certain things that I just would not say, or I wouldn't act a certain way or whatever, because like, I knew my mom was watching me. Like, it's just, it's, I, that's, that's my barometer. It's like, okay, am I going to get a phone call from my mom? And not to say she'll like never talk to me again, but it's like, am I going to get a phone call from my mom and she's going to be asking me all these questions about why? And I say, yeah, and because I, I really don't want to have that phone call, then I just don't do it. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's a Canadian thing. I, it's stereotypically a Canadian thing, but I've heard some people say some Canadians are terrible. So I don't know. But I mean, I try to live my life like I want to be treated. I want I want to treat people how I want to be treated. So I kind of live by that principle. It sounds like you have a good like conscience also. Oh yeah. I try I try my best. I actually I watched a few clips of TMZ and I noticed that same thing that you were just very level headed. You weren't like making any, but you weren't like ripping on somebody. You would say the truth, but you I think you all I don't remember what the situation was, but you like stuck up, you stuck up for somebody. Like yeah, somebody you never know. Like, have you ever thought about it this way or something? Yeah, because you never know, because there's so many different sides to a story. And um, I, I, I think that's another thing that I kind of learned as I got older, because it's very like black and white. To me, it's like, like you're either good or you're bad. And there's like a gray area and there's so many different situations and you never know. And something that somebody had pointed out to me about, um, like if you look at Cobra Kai, I just finished like binge watching it. I'm not going to give anything away. My but husband a lot 
watching it right now. <laughs> so oh I see it here. It's so good. It's so good. And it's so insane to see like it's just like filmed all like like I know all those areas, which is insane. But like if you take Cobra Kai, for instance, a lot of the situations happen because there's a misunderstanding and nobody chose to like actually sit down and have the conversation or say, okay, well, why do you think that person did that? And yeah. so, you know, that's with like, that's, you know, 90% of the soap operas and all, you know, all those like romantic, those rom-coms, it's like the situation happened because you assumed something versus what the actual truth may have been. So um, like, I really try to look from like all sides and, you know, you, you know, there's nobody, there's, there's, I don't necessarily believe there's a definite good and evil. Like I, I feel like there's certain situations that happen that cause people to make, you know, mistakes or, you know, choices based off of other things. Once again, you would be an amazing therapist, <laughs> but also you're going to be an amazing wife, amazing to be in a relationship with, because what you're talking about is that you don't judge and oh, yeah. judgment keeps people disconnected. And judgment is like the worst thing you can do in the right. world. So that's, I mean, that's what you're talking about. You're saying that you just don't judge and that people are doing the best that they can. Right. Yeah. And I mean, if I am, I'll tell you why. So I'm, I'm very like, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I also know that's like, okay, well, I feel this way because, and I always try to look at that, that perspective too. So, you know, I may take a snippet of that show and just put it on like my dating profiles. Like, this is why, but yeah. So, you know, I try. Now I'm going to be like, my wheels are going to be turning. I'm going to like add you to my repertoire of like, of single people that I know to, cause I'm oh Oh, I just thought of somebody. Oh, please are do. You okay with Chicago? Okay. Are you okay with long distance? Oh yeah. <gasps> Wait, there's one here also. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> we'll as he's not an actor. I think that's like my, like, I just don't want to deal with that. One is a, one is a musician, the one in Chicago. The one here is a film. He's a director. Is that okay? Well, I mean, the one, what's your age range? Um, oh my gosh, it's so it varies. Over the last two years, I've been dating younger. I always dated older. A lot of two years I've been dating younger because those guys really are like aggressive and it's it's weird. So I tried it and I was like, oh, this is like they're people too. So my age range is from like 27 to a young 50. <laughs> You <laughs> were good. I just like pulled the muscle on my body. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like an old 50, but a young 50. And there's some people who are like in their 40s and they look like they're like super. I can't, like, you have to yeah. be able to, you know, oh, handle Absolutely. It. And I think it's genetic also. It's genetic, but it's also your energy. Like, some guys are just more fun and like have a right. childlike essence with being mature also, which right. is the deal. Yeah. yeah. It depends on who you hang around with too. I think if your group around you is very diverse. So like, I, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say like my close friends are young, but like everybody, like I have different groups of people where like age is not necessarily a thing. But then when you say certain things like, oh, these people are clearly younger than me. But um, right. I, I think if your group is very diverse, then you're not stuck in like, okay, well, we all grew up in high school together and you know, we're all this. So I find if you're spread out a little bit, it, it helps. Yeah, you never know who you're going to meet. And I always say that if you say you go to an event and you're like, and you're hoping to meet a guy and it's like the event sucks and there are no guys there, yeah. you never know because you might make a new friend and maybe like her brother is your future husband. Like, so right. it's once again, it's about connection. Yeah. And anybody watching this, you never know. So don't just leave the party if there are no hot men there. Okay. Oh. Or like, it floats your boat. I might leave the party. That's okay, <laughs> I'm not, we're talking about this. Yeah, I, I, I'm. Well, I'm not. So here's the thing: I don't really like going out. I only go out if it has to do with like business or networking. So, it, or if somebody invites me out, I go out because like, okay, you invited me, and I'll take a picture because if I don't see you, I still want proof. Like, hey, I was there. I just didn't see you, and I'm. I like. I'll get there. Like depending on what the event is, I might get there like midway through and then leave in like 25, 30 minutes. So I, yeah, I'm not, I, I know you can meet potential people in like big events, but that's so not my okay. crowd. I'm definitely not saying stay for the evening. Like this goes back to the whole dating thing. Like if you're not happy, leave. Yeah. But maybe like with that in mind, stay for five minutes longer. Cause maybe at the door, you meet your yeah. future sister in law whose brother is homesick. Yeah. <laughs> you never For know. Sure. I, I, I do have to like try to be, 
when I go to events, I have to like coach myself up to be friendly because I'm, <laughs> I just don't, I just don't like for somebody who talks for a living, I just don't like to like, I don't like to, if I'm not getting paid to do it, that makes, that sounds terrible, but um, okay. yeah, I'm just, so oh, I, I have to, yeah, I'm aware of it. So when I catch myself, I try to prep myself on the way to the event, but if I totally forget about it. By the time I get to the event, I'm like, okay, this is great. Let's take a picture. The outfit has been documented and now I can go home. So yeah. You can use it for your Bumble or your Hinge. Cute picture. Yeah. Um, but I'm the same way. I get it. Like it's exhausting to have a conversation with somebody who, if it's not like intriguing, you're not really like wanting to have that conversation. Right. I totally get it. We're on the same page. Maybe just stay five minutes extra the next time. And you're going to be calling me. You're going to be like, oh, my God, thank you. I just met my potential future husband, somebody. Or <laughs> okay. So let's talk about your company. How did you decide to do this? And where did this all come from? How did you do um, it? Well, my father, uh, he's been an entrepreneur, owned his business like my entire life. So I grew up watching him like do his, you know, just we would be just whatever, as a family walking around, people would always stop him. So I always knew of the business, like, sense of him. Like, I kind of by, I don't know what the word is, by osmosis, I kind of mm -hmm. got that. So I always had, you know, I always had the, these ideas for these little businesses. Like, when I did the personal training stuff, it was, it was my own business as well. So maybe about, I don't know, maybe two or three years ago, I was like, I really want to start another business that doesn't require me. So I had gotten to the point where it's like personal training required me. And I, even though I had other personal trainers, but it's still like I was the face and all this other stuff. And I just wanted to do something that like I could be in my pajamas and it still can like carry on. Um, so I thought of, you know, I want to do something that I use. So it happened to be like cocoa butter and stuff like that. So what happened was I was doing a speaking engagement and one of the prizes or they, they gave all the speakers was this like all natural um, body wash. So I contacted the guy who ran the company and I kind of told him, hey, like I can do the business and let's kind of create another company. And he was just he just was all over the place. So I didn't have any time for him. And so happened my future business partner. We actually worked at TMZ together. So she left TMZ and she was traveling Europe. So we became really close. So when she came back, we started doing yoga and we kind of was just like every day we were just doing something different and she's very creative. So one day I got to her house and she just had candles for like, Christmas gifts. And like, like, why don't we like sell these? She's like, Oh, I never thought of it. So it took her about two weeks to kind of get UC idea. And then we made like 50 candles and sold them all in a week. And then she was on board. So then we started with our candles and our best, it's still our best seller, which is summer love. And then we added cocoa butter and then we added body scrubs and then we added body wash. And then we just kind of built it. And in 20, 19 we only made like fifteen hundred dollars nothing big because we were both kind of still doing our own thing and then um 2020 came and then february 2020 i hired somebody to redo the website because i had did it myself and probably two or three weeks later that's when the world shut down and our sales jumped by 200 percent. and so from that oh point God. i was just like oh okay um let's let's really kind of like really look at all this so then i like you know started looking at different um i kind of podcasts and stuff like that we got a bookkeeper and um i really just kind of day by day worked on the business and it grew and you know we're we're doing really well so every day is a, a learning lesson but i'm really really proud of it well i love it because you said the word natural like yes and so there, do you want to talk about, a little bit about that? Like, are there no this, no that, no parabens? No. Well, yeah. So there's no, um, there's no preservatives, no parabens, nothing like that. So it's all natural to the point that the summertime is like the worst time for us because our cocoa butter is all natural. Like it, it's affected by the heat. So that's how, nat so that's how, you know, in particular, like for lotions and, and body butters and stuff like that, that's how you know that it's all natural. Now, if you, if you get it and then you kind of leave it in your bathroom, it's a little bit hot and it's got, kind of gets a little bit soft. That's when you know it's all natural. If it stays kind of the same, then that means they put like a paraben or that means they put like a um, preservative preservative in it. And with the all natural products, they can also there's another name. I just lost the name of it. There's another like there's other things that they put on it that they might say it's all natural, but there's still preservatives in it. Sulfites? So, Sulfites? Um, gosh. I don't want to call her out. There's this one company that somebody brought to us 
and they had a sugar scrub and it's promoted by Kim Kardashian. And she was really pushing this company. And the lady's like, oh, it's all natural. But then there was like one long, there was like one word in there where it's just like, I can't so like, yeah. And it's like, wait a minute, that's not all natural. And there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I get it. You know, you want to preserve your product, but then don't say that. But it's just like with, you know, grocery stores and stuff that's or, or like organic. It's not necessarily all the way organic, but all our stuff is super all natural, all natural. My business partners are real stickler for that to the point that like, you know, if you have peanut allergies, we don't have any like nut products in there. Um, apparently people are allergic to honey, so we don't have any stuff that has like honey. So it's pretty mm -hmm. much like you could use it on a baby and there's not going to be any issues whatsoever. And that's for all of our products. I am 100% going to be purchasing some of these products because I love cocoa butter. Mm -hmm. I always have. It's just, it's very moist emollient and like moisturizing. Mm -hmm. So if that's one of your biggest ingredients and I have a question about the candles. Oh my God. Um, Candles. What are the candles made out of? So the candles, so they have coconut wax and they also have cocoa butter and shea butter in there as well. And so this is sounds so bad. Um, somebody's told me I shouldn't tell this story, but I'm going to anyway. So we changed the candles from just like regular candles and it had, um, I think we started off with, we may have started off with soy, then we switched to coconut wax. And then I was reading some article um, and it's like, oh, well you can make your candles massage candles. So we switched to making it massage candles, maybe, six or seven months ago. And so the thing with the massage candle is like you, you know, you light the candle and then when you blow it out, there's kind of like a pool and it's not, it's not going to burn your skin. You can actually put it on your skin. So I've had, like, I now have candles like all over my house and I burn one every time I take a bath and maybe three or four weeks ago, I told myself, Oh my gosh, I have, I have a massage candle. It's like part of my company. Maybe I should like really try this out. So I did. And it was amazing because it's like, you're, it's like your lotion just got warmed up. And then you just put it all over your body. So you blow out the candle. So what I do is I light it while I'm taking a shower and then I blow out the candle and then I just pour it onto my skin. And it's like a, it's like a body oil, but it's warm. It's like so, it's so amazing. So like that, I'm really, really pushing the like massage candles because a lot of people see massage candles. And one lady's like, oh, well, I just thought, you know, just light it when you do a massage. And I'm like, no, you can like massage it into your body. And it's just own massage, self massage. Yes, it's so, or you know, partner of course, massage, yeah, for Valentine's Day, but yeah, it's so like the massage candles are like I alternate between the two. I'll do the massage candle one day and then I'll do like the body butter the next day. Um, but they're both all natural, so even with the massage candle, like every everything in there is there's no preservatives in there whatsoever. And um, with the coconut wax, it's coconut oil in the coconut wax, so it's also helpful to moisturize the skin. I'm so excited. And speaking of Valentine's Day. Great time for your products. Anybody who's watching who's like, oh my God, I need a, I need a gift idea. Yes. Woo! Yeah, we have the Love Collection we just launched. Um, I'm really excited about this one too. So uh, my business partner came back from Jamaica, I think about, I don't know, the, eh, the first week of January. So we developed the scents together. And um, so we came up with three new scents um, in addition to the scents that we have. So one's called Paris. Um, which is like, and that comes in the body wash, the candle and the cocoa butter. Another one is called Kyoto, which is like a, almost like a Jas Japanese blossom type scent. And the other one is called Santorini, Santorini, which is a uh, named after a city in Greece. Mm -hmm. So they're all like really like their scents are so, they're like so amazing. I'm excited, but I'm also like, it sounds bad too. I'm excited, but what happens is I'm always the last one to get the products because usually when like we started selling them last week, so all the products are pretty much sold out. So we have to like make some more. So I'm usually the last one to actually get the products, even though I get so excited about the scent. So I'm excited about them, but like I'm excited when we're only having the, the love collection out for about six to eight weeks. So when that happens, happens all the leftovers come to me so i'm really excited about that part so <laughs> but i'm really it's the love collection is definitely it's it's pr perfect time for valentine's day and it's a whole special well i don't know i think people i don't know if people can go back out now i don't know what the deal is i heard that oh, well, yeah i'm the station manager before you um got on today he's he told me that they've made an announcement that in la yeah. i think by he said by the end of the week restaurants are opened yeah so I, don't, I don't know telling us yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's it's all a weird scenario. But if you choose to go out, you can still use massage candles. But well, it's, yeah, it's you can do it. You can do the massage after the romantic dinner. 
Exactly. Yeah. Like well, as, you're, as you're having dessert or wine or something. But yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's a whole yeah, section. Are good through COVID and beyond. Yes. Very <laughs> true. Commercial for you. Yeah. Um, well, don't be surprised if you get a very large order from Brownstein <laughs> because everything you're, I mean, I feel like I want to get everything. So I'm going well, to. We do have samples too. So if there's something you really, really like, you can get mm. that. And then you're like, I want to try everything else. We have, I just added it. I'm also excited about that because I do like the back end of the website. You can go on the samples. The samples are completely free and you can tap on all the samples that you want to try. So you're like, I want to try all the scrubs. And then you just like order a cocoa butter. You can do that. Or if you just want to try all the samples and then order after, like you decide which one, you can do that as well. I'm so excited. Okay. So anything else you would like to share today during this Love Talk Live interview? Um, uh, well, what I also I did learn, so I'm also on a show called um, Black Queens Uncut. So we talk about like love, sex, relationships, all that other stuff. And we had a sex therapist on or something like that. And she said, put it out into the universe. So I guess what I have been doing on interviews and when I'm on shows, putting it out that I my DMs are available and they're open. So if you want to slide into the DMs to see if we have a connection, you are more than welcome to. So I'm putting that in the universe too. <laughs> She's inviting. Now you're going to get all these DMers. I know, right? <laughs> the Okay, man out there, buy some candles, show up at her door. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that part but buy the product. actually i actually found that's been happening too like a lot of guys they'll like buy the products even though like we don't work out some of them i never even went on a date with and they buy it which is also helpful because like i appreciate the support um but that's you can get a lot of points in my book if you like buy i've like been on dates where the first date i'm actually giving them an order and we go on a date so that's right. that's that's a you know bonus in my book you're like killing 12 birds with one stone it's so great <laughs> Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, so and what? Speaking of DMs, um, plug away with any with your website, your socials, how people can find you. And um, you can find me on everything at TK Trinidad. So TK letter T and K, like the country Trinidad, T R I N I D A D. Um, if you go there, you're gonna find everything else. But if you wanna like really interested in the cocoa butter and the candles and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you can go to centerin.co. So C E N T E R I N dot co that's a website but if you go on center and uh center and co that's all the social media as well and then like i said if you go on either one of those platforms you'll be able to find everything else that i'm into so if you like wrestling i have a wrestling show if you like you know girls talking about crazy stuff there's a show for that as well so yeah a little bit of everything and some cocoa butter to and put on butter. why not you know Okay, well, I'm sure that you'll be getting lots of DMs, lots of hits on your socials and website. Um, and as always, anybody can reach me at therelationshipexpert.com. So TK, thank you so much for joining me today. You are a joy to interview. You're so interesting. You have so much to share. And I just wish you so much luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Same to you. Thank you so much. And everybody... Join us every week on Love Talk Live on LA Talk Radio. Have a great night, everyone. You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on LA Talk Radio.